Good morning. Billy, please read the problem, and Bobby, please translate. Flippin' physics. A rope is wrapped around a bicycle wheel with a rotational inertia of 0.68 times the mass of the wheel times the radius of the wheel squared. The wheel is released from rest and allowed to descend without slipping as the rope unwinds from the wheel. In terms of G, determine the acceleration of the wheel as it descends. Okay, the rotational inertia of the bike wheel is 0.68 times capital M, the mass of the wheel uh, times the square of capital R, the radius of the wheel, the initial velocity of the wheel is zero, the rope does not slip relative to the wheel, uh, the acceleration of the wheel equals question mark in terms of little g, the acceleration due to gravity. In a previous lesson, we determined this rotational inertia of the bicycle wheel, which equals 0.68 times the mass of the wheel times the radius of the wheel squared. Now, Bobby, could you please begin solving the problem? Could you solve for the acceleration of the wheel in terms of g? The acceleration of the wheel, well, we'll need to draw a free body diagram and sum the forces. Uh, the force of gravity on the wheel acts down at the center of mass of the wheel. The force of tension from the rope acts up where the rope last touches the wheel. The net force in the y direction equals the force of tension minus the force of gravity, which then equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. Adding the force of gravity to both sides means the force of tension equals the force of gravity plus the mass of the wheel times acceleration. Substituting ma in mass times acceleration due to gravity for the force of gravity and factoring out the mass of the wheel means the force of tension equals the mass of the wheel times the quantity acceleration due to gravity plus acceleration in the y direction. We, we can find the net torque acting on the wheel. Uh, let, let's choose the center of the wheel as the axis of rotation. The only force causing torque around the center of the wheel is the force of tension. Oh, oh uh, we should define the, the direction the wheel is going to rotate as the positive torque direction. So the net torque equals the positive uh, of the torque caused by the force of tension, which, e which equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Torque equals the R vector times force times the sine of the angle between those two vectors. The R vector in this case is the distance from the axis of rotation to the force of tension, which is the radius of the wheel. The force is the force of tension, and the angle between those two vectors is 90 degrees. And for the rotational inertia of the wheel, we can substitute in 0.68 times the mass of the wheel times the square of the radius of the wheel. But then we have an angular acceleration in the net torque equation and a linear acceleration in the net force equation. Very nice, Bobby. Now, what about Bobby's observation that there is an angular acceleration in the net torque equation and a linear acceleration in the net force equation? How can we connect those two accelerations? The wheel rolls without slipping on the rope, right? Yes, Bo, that is correct. So then, the equations for rolling without slipping, do they apply here? Yes, Bo, you may use the equations for rolling without slipping because the rope does not slip relative to the wheel. Okay. We know tangential acceleration equals radius times angular acceleration, and the equation for the acceleration of the center of mass of an object rolling without slipping is similar, only the radius in the equation is the radius of the wheel. The acceleration of the center of mass of the wheel is the acceleration in the y direction of the wheel. Therefore, the angular acceleration of the wheel equals the acceleration in the y direction of the wheel divided by the radius of the wheel. We can substitute that back into our net torque equation. The sine of 90 degrees equals 1. One of the capital R's cancels out on the right-hand side of the equation, and everybody, everybody brought R to the party. Wait a second, we now have two equations for the force of tension, which we can set equal to one another, and uh, everybody, everybody brought mass to the party. Everybody brought mass. mass. Billy, please finish the problem. Sure, uh, subtract acceleration in the y direction from both sides of the equation. We now have negative 0.32 times acceleration in the y direction equals little g. 
That means acceleration in the y direction equals a negative little g divided by 0 0.32 or um, negative 3.125 times little g or negative 3.1 times the acceleration due to gravity with two significant digits. That does not make sense. Yeah, the wheel is not going to accelerate faster than the acceleration due to gravity. What about the negative? Maybe something is wrong uh, with a direction. A direction seems to often be our mistake. I'm glad you all recognize that this answer is not possible. The wheel will not have an acceleration with a magnitude larger than the acceleration due to gravity. And the mistake does come down to direction. Bobby, you decided the direction the wheel was spinning was the positive torque direction, correct? Yeah. Then the angular acceleration of the wheel is positive. However, when we summed the forces in the y direction, we used the conventional up is positive and down is negative directions, correct? Yeah. Then the linear acceleration of the center of mass of the wheel is down, which is negative. In other words, according to our currently defined directions, the angular acceleration of the wheel is positive, and the linear acceleration of the center of mass of the wheel is negative. However, because the acceleration of the center of mass of the wheel equals the radius of the wheel times the angular acceleration of the wheel, the angular acceleration of the wheel and the linear acceleration of the wheel have to be in the same direction. That is where our mistake is. So how do we fix it? How do we make the directions of the angular and linear accelerations of the wheel the same? We could reverse the direction of positive torque, or we could make down positive and up negative. Both of those ideas would correct our solution. So uh, I'll pick one. Let's reverse the direction of the positive torque. This means the torque caused by the force of tension is negative, which makes the force of tension equal to negative 0.68 times the mass of the wheel times the acceleration of the wheel in the y direction. Following that through the solution means the acceleration in the y direction equals negative little g divided by 1.68, which works out to be negative 0.60 times acceleration due to gravity with two significant digits. And the acceleration in the y direction is negative because the wheel is accelerating downwards. Here on planet Earth, that works out to be roughly negative 5.8 meters per second squared. Do take a moment to notice the acceleration of the wheel depends only on the acceleration due to gravity of the planet and the shape of the wheel. The mass and radius of the wheel do not affect the wheel's acceleration. Cool. Okay. I do want to also take a moment to compare this to a measured result. The wheel takes 0.49 seconds for its center of mass to displace downward 0.75 meters, and the wheel starts at rest. We can use the uniformly accelerated motion equation displacement equals velocity initial times change in time plus one half times acceleration times change in time squared to solve for the linear acceleration of the wheel in the y direction. We get negative 6.2 meters per second squared, which I would consider pretty close to negative 5.8 meters per second squared, which is nice. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.